Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? Hope everyone is doing fantastic during this fabulous week. Well, I'm gonna continue my summer spotlight where I interview influential people from different facets in the community. Last week we had Little Rock's very own DJ Doug Kramer and he had so many great things to share. Well, this week, this gentleman, a man of many talents, comes from my homeland of Los Angeles, which I miss so much. But let me tell you just a bit about him, all right? Writer, director, producer, black belt, right? Yeah. And also a choreographer and actor. Now, some of you might even recognize his name or even take a peek at knowing who he is from Star Wars. And as far as choreography goes, I had the opportunity of taking his stage combat class, which I believe is fighting without fighting. So all you peeps down in LA, when you do have a chance, go and enroll, go take his class, because it's so worth it, but be advised, you will get a workout. <laughs> without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. Ahmed Best. Thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing this. Thanks for having me. Thank you for taking the time. I know you've come all the way from Los Angeles to yeah. Europe. How do you like the humidity? Um, you know, I'm used to it. Really? I, I grew up in New York City, and New York has a lot of humidity, especially in the summertime. See? So I'm, I'm used to it. I dig it. Anything different out of the norm that you like out of uh, Little Rock in Arkansas? It's a lot quieter here. Really? Well, yeah, LA. <laughs> in New York. Yeah, it's, it's a lot quieter here. And that's kind of cool, you know, every once in a while you need to step away and get out of the big city. But um, everyone here is just so nice. All the people are so nice. You get a nice good morning from everybody. Yes, sir. Southern hospitality? Very much so. And uh, do you enjoy the food? I know yeah. that you keep a strict diet. I How do, I food? do, but um, Little Rock has broken me away from my diet just a little bit, so Sorry about really that, good. Bob. No, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Well, part of my project and my session here is to ask influential people, and you're very influential. I have to honestly mm -hmm. say you're a living legend, for real, for Thank many you. of us. And uh, I definitely am so honored that you're taking the time my first question I want to ask you, what was in your life that made you realize this is your career of choice? Well, I mean, honestly, for me, it came and got me. I didn't really look for it. Um, when I was in high school, I was an athlete. I was a track and field athlete. And I was pretty good, you know, I was number one in the country. Congrats. And my whole focus was like, all right, go to run, make the Olympics, go to a Big Ten school, get um, get really good at being an athlete and then one day I was on stage I'd always been doing music and acting kind of all my life here and there whether it be in like small productions small films school plays but I didn't really take it seriously until I was about a, a junior in high school and that's when it kind of got me I was on stage uh, playing in the concert band for like a concert band uh, concert and there was one piece of music called Wingate Festival I'll never forget it and as soon as it, we started playing it I started crying I was just like emotional and that's when I knew like the stage was for me so I put all my energy into it I put all my energy into acting and I put all my energy into playing music and that's where I was so that moment was cathartic it really was. I mean, I wasn't looking for it, honestly. It, it, I didn't choose the arts. The arts chose me. I had always been good at a bunch of different things. You know what I mean? I, I, had, a, I had a mind for learning. I still do. I'm a, I love learning. So learning wasn't a problem. Finding a, a thing to do, I had a lot at my disposal. I mean, thanks to my parents, they gave me a lot of good opportunities to kind of figure out what I wanted to do. The stage chose me. I love that. I love that. You mentioned your parents. My next question will be, who in your life has been influential to help you be who you are? Yeah, I mean, definitely my parents. You know, they were my first teachers. And my father was my first martial arts teacher. And that's who actually got me into the martial arts. My father was a black belt in karate. And he was a really tough teacher, you know? And 
Uh, my brother and my sister and myself would take my father's class. We'd go to Brownsville, Brooklyn every weekend. He would teach kids in the projects in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'd go to Brooklyn every weekend, and, you know, being the son of the sensei, it wasn't easy. You know, I had to fight everybody. But I loved it. Like, I wanted to stay in it. And, you know, my father learned in Japan. In Japan? Yeah, yeah. He was um, stationed in Okinawa during the whole Vietnam conflict. So um, he was in the Air Force, and he learned karate in Japan and then brought the Japanese way of teaching to New York. And he was, he taught very, Japanese are very strict, <laughs> you know? So my father was very strict. The hard part is like when we got home, it was still karate class, like it never ended. But um, both my parents, my mother and my father, were very much polymaths. Like my mother was an artist who could draw, paint, write, play music. She could do everything. And my father uh, is a cinematographer. Uh, so he was always behind the camera. He was always talking about film. And he worked at Good Morning America in New York City. So I would always go to work with him and watch him do his job behind the camera. And um, it was really influential. He, he, both of them actually solidified for me that you can be in the arts as a profession. It doesn't have to be a hobby. It can actually be how you feed your family that's what they both did, you know, they fed us with the arts. Uh, but even through that, I had a, a lot of really great teachers. And most of the teachers that I had were teachers who would demystify things, you know, they would take away all the complicated parts of learning and boil it down to its simplest thing. And they helped me realize that it's not the student's job to get it, it's the teacher's job to make the student get it. If the student doesn't get it, it's not the student's fault. The teacher has to find a way. And all the teachers that have influenced me, they all found a way. I could tell from the class that you taught on Saturday, as I mean, it was an hour and a half compared to what your full session is, mm -hmm. but I have to say that your way of teaching is, is extraordinary, for real. Thank you. You connected with everyone, and I loved it. Now, I, I knew we were going to get a little hot and sweaty in there, yeah. but yeah, yeah, I got my little workout going. That's good. Thank That's you good. so much for the awesome class. Yeah, my pleasure. You know, it's important for me that when I pass on knowledge that I give you the information that clicks to you, you know, I give you information that makes sense to you individually, and then you take it and do you with it, you know what I mean, and for me it's not about turning you into me, it's really, you know, I have a really good, one of my best friends in, in martial arts instructors named John Machado, um, John Machado once said to me, he was like, I'm not comparing everyone else here to you, I'm you to you and that's my goal as well my goal is to make you a better you I'm not really interested in turning you into me I'm not interested in disciples you know what I mean I'm more interested in you taking the information and expressing yourself as a human being as who you are that is fantastic I love that um, thank you for sharing that on that same route since you're sharing wisdom um, uh, I would be honored, along with everyone else watching, as you can tell, ladies and gentlemen, we are literally inside the Arkansas Repertory Theater. Mm -hmm. What better background for us thespians to be sitting here talking about how to make our dreams come true? Uh, the third question I want to ask, since you've inspired me now, what can you share with us to help us still in our journey to making sure our dreams come true uh, to one day we get to where you're at? Mm -hmm. Well, you know. hopefully you'll be way <laughs> than where I'm at. Um, but the hardest part about doing all of this is realizing that there is some work to do, you know. And when you're in any phase of doing what you're doing, there's always an opportunity to get better at doing it. 
and sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes you don't want to get up. Sometimes you don't understand the exercise. Sometimes you don't want to put in the 10,000 hours, you know. There really is no fast way to do this, you know. There really is no fast way to do anything you really love. If you want to do it at high level, you have to put in the work, you know. You have to. There's no other way around it. And the work might seem tedious. It might seem irrelevant. And there are a lot of people who have a lot of talent who get all over on their talent or their looks. Eventually, all of that goes away. You know, eventually you're going to have to work. So, you know, regardless of how much talent you have or how good you look, you're going to have to do the work sooner or later, you know. Um, and I would just say jump into it. Really lean into the work, the hard work, the easy work. Get involved in some place or with someone or somewhere that's doing the work that you want to do. And be relentless. You know, love it. Love the process of doing it. Love the process of learning it. You know, just get in there. Get your hands dirty. And don't be afraid. Don't wait. Right. You know what I mean? A, friend, a really good friend of mine, when I was leaving film school, uh, his name is Peter Jan Bruch. He's a producer for all the uh, Michael Mann movies. Michael Mann. And um, he's also a director as well. And he said to me, and when I was in, in film school, he was like, I know what you're doing. Don't wait. Don't wait to be great. Don't wait to, for someone else to give you a hand. Do it. Don't wait. So that's what I would say. Don't wait. Jump in. Jump in. If there's something that you want to do, jump in. Do it. Try it. Figure it out. Learn it. Find somebody else who's doing it. And talk to them. Ask them how they did it. Yeah, you know I mean, do the work. I appreciate you taking the time and sharing the pinpoint because just I'm, I feel we're on the same vibe. Right. And I love the fact that you're clicking on work. Personally, I want to be at, and I hope everyone else is capturing this. You're getting here unplugged straight out advice from a truly influential living legend uh, but before we head out I do have a bonus question you know my profile says DJ actor and family man well, I yeah. want to include the DJ part and being that you had some great jams on Saturday right what is your go-to jam right now when, when that song comes out what gets you going um, my go-to jam right now is off of Jay-Z's new record 444 and it's the track um, that is featuring Damian Marley I can't remember the name of the track, yeah, no, no, no. It, it, um, fresh, fresh. but yeah, that that one is that gets me up Ooh. every time. Every time I hear it, I'm, I'm ready to go. The fact they named Marley, I'm like wow, of the Bob and Marley, Bob yeah. Marley yeah, yeah. Uh, family. Bob Marley's kid. Um, wow, I'm extremely honored. Thank you so much for taking the time and sharing your heart and sharing your dream that means the world to me. I'm sure everyone else who's watching. Um, but again, everyone, I'm at best here. On on live here in Little Rock. So again, any information that you want to pass once you get back to LA? Um, yeah, you can check me out uh, on Twitter, and I'm at best uh, on Instagram at best I'm at, and check out my podcast. I have a new podcast called the Afro Futurist. The Afro Futurist, and that is available on iTunes or Stitcher or any podcast. We'll make sure we type it out. We'll make sure we type it out on the thing and everything. We are in the working theater. Yeah, we are in the working theater. But again, thank you so much again. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome, guys. Until next time, catch you next week. DJ Mario with Ahmed Best. Also, you guys rock. Thank you.